Hello. In this video, we are going to continue 2.04 and continue learning about finding real zeros of polynomials. In the previous video, we learned about synthetic division. Now we are going to begin learning about factor theorem. Factor theorem states, a polynomial f of x has a factor x minus k if and only if f of k equals zero or if the remainder is zero when the polynomials are divided. Then the divisor is a factor of the dividend. So that second part is talking about what we did with synthetic division. When we divided by a certain number and then we got zero at the end, that meant that it was a factor. If we didn't get zero, then that means it wasn't a factor. But we're going to learn another way to do this. So first, we have to solve x minus k equals zero. Then we're going to plug our x into the function. So whatever we get, x equals whatever number, we're going to take that number and plug it into the function. Then we're going to see, did we get zero? If we did, then that number was a factor. So then the x minus k was a factor. If we don't get zero, then no, it's not a factor. So let's look at an example. We're going to determine if the following is a factor of f of x f of x is 4x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 2. And then we have x plus 1. So the first thing we need to do is solve for x. So subtracting 1 from both sides, x equals negative 1. So that was step 1. Now step 2, we're going to take x minus 1 and plug it into f of x. I mean x equals negative 1 and plug it into f of x. So f of negative 1. 4 times negative 1 to the 4th minus 2 times negative 1 squared minus 2. We're going to plug all of that into our calculator at one time. When you plug it into your calculator, you should get 0, which means that x plus 1 is a factor of the polynomial f of x equals 4x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 2. Now, if we would have got f of 1, f of negative 1, or say we plugged in 2, I don't know. Say we plugged in 2, okay? We plugged in 2, we get 54. So that means that x minus 2 is not a factor of f of x. So our goal is to find numbers that give us zero. Now let's talk about the remainder theorem. The remainder theorem is very similar to the factor theorem. If the polynomial f of x is divided by x minus k, then the remainder is r equals f of k. Now that's just the formal definition. What I want you to know is that you're going to solve x minus k equals zero plug it into the function, whatever you get is your remainder. So, let's look at an example. We're going to determine the remainder for the function f of x equals 4x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 2, and we are dividing it by x minus 3. So we are going to take this and set it equal to 0, just like that, and we know that this is going to equal 3. So 3 is what we need to plug in to our function. 4 times 3 to the 4th minus 2 times 3 squared minus 2. Wowzers, we get 304. 304, man. Okay, so 3 definitely was not a factor of the function. So if we were to divide by x minus 3, our remainder will look like this. Now let's connect this to synthetic division. We know we would have three in our box. Our coefficient is four. That's not in line. We're missing the power of three, so we need a zero. Minus two for our x squared. We're missing the power of x, so we need a zero, and then minus two. So remember we bring our four down 
3 times 4 is 12. 0 and 12 is 12. 3 times 12 is 36. That's going to simplify to 34. 3 times 34 is 102. And 3 times 102 is 306. And then we get 304. So now if we're writing our polynomial, we started with the fourth power, so we have to drop it to the third power. So we know it x minus 3 times 4x cubed, 4 minus 1 is 3, plus 12x squared, plus 34x, plus 102. And then we're going to take our remainder, 304, and put it over what we divided by, x minus 3. So that is how you would write that right there. Now, our goal is to get this to be 0, right? So in what we're about to do, then you would have to do it again. But if I tell you to divide by something, if I say use synthetic division to divide the polynomial f of x by x minus 3, and you don't get 0, this is how you write your answer. But let's talk about finding rational zeros. So there's a thing where it's called a rational zero test. You're going to find um, your constant of your polynomial, and you're going to list all its factors. When you list all your factors, we call those your, those your p's. Then we're going to find our q's, and we're going to find our q's by finding the leading coefficient and listing all of its factors. And then we're going to find our p over q's, which is meaning that we're going to take all of our p's and place it over all of our q's. Then we're going to determine these will be all of our possible zeros. I don't know why that didn't come up first. But this is how we find all of our possible zeros. Then we could use remainder theorem and factor theorem to determine which of the zeros were actually factors or which of all the possible zeros were actually zeros of the polynomial. So let's look at an example. We're going to determine all possible roots of the polynomial. 2x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 4x minus 4. So we know that we are going to have up to four roots, right? Okay, to find my p's, I have to find my constant, which is negative 4. I'm going to list all my factors of negative 4, which is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4. Because I know that 4 is 1, time, oops, one times 4 or 2 times 2. So those are my p's. Now I need to find my q's. To find my q's, I need to find my leading coefficient, which is 2. And I know that the factors of 2 are 1 times 2. So plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. Now I need to find my p over q's. So I have to take all of my factors, all of my factors of my p's right here, and put them over my q's. Well, think about this. If I take my p's and put them over 1, is that going to change anything? No. But if I take my p's and I put them over q's, that is going to change something. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put them over 2 first, and then I'll write it over 1, and I'll show you, how you why you would not necessarily need to write those out. So p over q, um, plus or minus always, 1 over 2 plus or minus 2 over 2, plus or minus 4 over 2. Okay, now we know if we put plus or minus 1 over 1, plus or minus 2 over 1, plus or minus 4 over 1. But let's look at something here. Plus or minus 1 half, can I simplify that? No. Can I su simplify plus or minus 2 over 2? That's a plus or minus 1, right? Plus or minus 4 over 2. That's a 2. I see that I have a 1 and a 2 already. All of these simplify to 1, 2, and 4. I have 1, 2, 4. So, with that being said, here 
and just my peas, here are all of my possible roots. I have six different possible real roots, plus or minus one, so a positive one, a negative one, a positive two or a negative two, a positive four or a negative four. So these are the six numbers that we are going to use to determine what are the actual roots. So let's go ahead and let's plug in one. Two times one to the fourth, minus two times one squared, minus four times one minus four. This equals negative eight. So we know that this is not a factor. We're gonna do the same thing with two. And this equals 12. So we know it's not a factor. We're going to do the same thing with four. I just decided to go ahead and do all the positive numbers first because it's easier for me to type them in my calculator that way. I don't have to retype everything every time. This equals 460, so it's not a root either. Let's start with our negative numbers. F of negative one. Okay, and this equals zero, so we know that right now we have one factor of negative one. But we know that we can have up to four, so we need to keep plugging in. F of negative two. And when we plug in negative two, we get 28. So that's not a factor. And then I need to plug in negative four. And that equals a 492. So that's not a factor. But we still have to plug in our P over Q, which is a positive one half and a negative one half. When I plug in positive one half, I get 51 over eight. And whenever I plug in negative one half, I get negative 51 over eight. So I know neither one of these are factors. This tells me that I only have one real root and it is um, x equals negative one. So I know that x equals negative one. I know that x plus one is a factor. So there are my answers, right? That's just two different ways of writing the same answer. So that concludes our section 2.04 on finding real roots of polynomials.